What's up, Buckeye Nation? Florida Corey here. Ohio State football with Scarlet and Great right here on YouTube. Last time we talked about Ohio, Ohio State's defense versus Wisconsin's offense. Of course, we're going to be doing the reverse today as we get ready for the big-time matchup coming up this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. on ABC, guys. Remember to check. You, I know you, I ain't going to tell you. You're going to go ahead and tune into that one. I, ain't, I don't have to pump you up for that one. You know this is a big game, Big Ten season opening up for Ohio State. The out-of-conference schedule is done couple of uh, perceived cupcakes versus one we thought uh, uh, what we got with we thought was a tough team in Notre Dame but they ended up maybe not being a tough game team in Notre Dame we don't know yet but we are definitely going to get a tough matchup against Wisconsin and I know a lot of people like to say well they lost to Washington State or I covered that in the last video as a little bit of a fluky loss in my opinion definitely do not underestimate Wisconsin going forward but as I said before we're going to be talking about Ohio State's uh, offense versus Wisconsin's, day, uh, Wisconsin's defense in this episode today. Here in the wee hours of the morning, by the way, uh, recording this for you. So, man, I should be should be working on other things, but here I am, pumped up for Ohio State football, ready to talk with you guys about what's going to happen uh, this Saturday. Can't wait for it. Anyway, guys, it's pretty interesting because I was looking at the Vegas line on this one, and uh, it's inter- they got Ohio State, as of this recording, favored by 19. I don't know if that'll move by Saturday or not. The over under 57. Vegas is essentially predicting a 38 to 19 Ohio State victory. And I thought that was a little interesting because right now Ohio State's averaging about 48 points per game. And Wisconsin's allowing about 12 points per game. And, uh, you know, obviously you come in on the out of conference schedule, that's going to be a little skewed a little bit because Wisconsin has not played extremely tough competition. Neither, neither has Ohio State. Uh, let's be real. Uh, Notre Dame being the toughest test defensively, obviously, among those teams. I mean, I know Toledo was like considered the number four defense in the country playing us, and they dropped to 80th, I think it was, after we uh, bludgeoned them. But uh, we all knew that that was a mismatch. And no, and I was telling Shane on here, Toledo hadn't played anybody, so don't, don't think that they're going to give us too many fits on that one. But it's interesting because under Ryan Day, I bet y'all didn't. I don't know if y'all knew this or not. He's only played them twice. In 2019, we played Wisconsin twice. And that was the dominant year of Ohio State, Ryan Day, right? And uh, I think he averaged, uh, as a head coach, he averaged 36 to 14 wins that year. I mean, the, the first game was pretty dominant, 38 to 7 win, although it didn't start out that way. I know it ended up that way. And in the Big Ten title game, of course, you know, uh, Wisconsin had our number for the first half. I mean, you know that, that gif out there. You know, they had us in the first half. I'm not going to lie. Well, they did. They had us in the first half. We did. They're telling no lies. But Justin Fields woke up, played an incredible second half. Defense woke up, played an incredible second half. And Ryan Day had some uh, pretty ballsy calls uh, with a fake punt and everything like that. But it's okay, man. We came out the victorious at 36-14. So I thought Vegas was actually pretty on par with what recent history indicates. Uh, also, re- speaking of recent history, Ohio State's won the last eight meetings with against Wisconsin. Last time Wisconsin won in Columbus was 2004, what, 18 years ago now? Um, so Ohio State has uh, executed some dominance over the Wisconsin Badgers in recent history. So hit that like button, by the way. If, you've loved, if you have loved every minute of Ohio State's dominance over Wisconsin, especially going back to 2014 uh, Big Ten title game, where Ohio State won 59 to nothing. I think we can all remember that game. Uh, that was, as I've said to my friends in the past, that is football porn for Ohio State fans. Uh, anyway, I want to talk about a couple of key defensive players for Wisconsin. Uh, I had to look these names up because I, I I was typing these down, and two of these names specifically on here, you can probably look at the uh, banner there. Uh, leading tackler, I, I didn't. I was not going to guess this correctly because I had to look it up on YouTube. But it was uh, Muma uh, Nangmeta, and I was 19 tackles. He's leading uh, Wisconsin linebacker Muma Nagmeta. I would have never have guessed that in my life. But I'm glad I looked it up to pay the respect to the kid. He's a good player. Uh, another linebacker, kind of an edge rusher, more as Nick Herbig. Uh, he was the number eight player actually in Joshua Perry's uh, count top 30 countdown for the Big Ten players. Uh, four sacks, leading the. Uh, leading uh, Wisconsin by a large margin in sacks. Because to be honest with you, as a team, their sack percentage is pretty low. Nick is obviously their best pass rusher. And I I was watching a little tape on well, tape YouTube video on him. <laughs> Not like I'm sitting back in my room watching film. Anyway, and interesting about him, he's a really good player. Really, really, really good player. Really quick off the edge. Um, they've lined him up right and left, but I saw him on the right tackle quite often making big plays that worried me a little bit because I'm not saying he can't beat Paris Johnson because Paris 
is still relatively new to left tackle position is and this in my opinion will be the best player he's played uh you could say Foskey was and he had he had Foskey in a blender I'm not gonna lie but um Herbig I think might be a better player than Foskey off the edge but but I think Paris can handle his own now Dewan Jones, however, has never been great against speed rushers, and this guy is kind of the epitome of that. If I were Wisconsin, if I were trying to, uh, you know, take a matchup problem for Ohio State, I would put Nick on Dano, uh, Big Thanos there and Dewan Jones and see what he can do with him um, because uh, the Dewan's never been great with those kinds of pass rushers. So I, I look for Nick to have a potentially a good game unless we game plan, uh, you know, some help for Dewan Jones out on that right side. Again, but Wisconsin, Wisconsin is not going to limit him there. They're going they line him up all over the place. He goes inside at times. He's just a, a, a dynamic player. He's a really, really good player. Uh, and then, of course, the, uh, I think preseason um, second team All Big Ten, Keanu Benton nose tackle, big guy eats up double teams, helps guys like Nick and uh, Muma get actually uh, some room to work and operate. So they uh, they can get the tackle totals they get. They can get pressure on the quarterback, things like that. That guy, he's an unsung hero a little bit. Really nice player. And uh, he's, got, he's a veteran player, too. He's got a well over 20 starts now, I think. So uh, definitely somebody to watch. Uh, we'll see how the interior line, the uh, Ohio State handles him. A big test for Whipler and Jackson and Jones in the, in the interior there. Um, some team facts for Wisconsin. Uh, here's an interesting thing. I, I looked this up, and I said seven interceptions in three games, guys. Seven. And it's by seven different players. Seven players have one interception. That's interesting to me. And it's also interesting to me in coinciding with the fact that they have a low sack percentage. I mean, I think they have seven total sacks as a team, Nick being the one with four. And so obviously they're a team that can get, they like to play downhill. They can get pressure on you and they're forcing quarterbacks into bad decisions. We obviously know Ohio State does not turn the ball over and CJ Stroud is a good decision maker with the football in his hands. So that'll be a nice little, you know, uh, immovable object meets a uh, runaway, whatever, however that you say that, uh, saying, gosh, I can't think on my feet. I'm just, I'm so tired, guys. Uh, anyway, I had a Michael Scott moment. What do you want from me? Anyways, uh, I have those frequently on this show. But, I mean, like, what, what so what gives is what what's good in that matchup? Because we don't turn the ball over, but they, they have three takeaways a game as a defense. I mean, so... It's gonna it's gonna be about who makes those mistakes versus who you know are we gonna make those mistakes finally or I, I actually think we're a pretty good team and I I expect at least one turnover in this game but I I don't think we're going to be exactly uh, you know a team like a Washington State or uh, or whoever else they play they played a couple of patsies after that that will turn the ball over uh, multiple times in this game even though Wisconsin seems to be pretty good at taking the ball away they're twelfth in the in the team pass defense efficiency in the nation. Uh, then they're 11th in total defense. That's the interesting thing about uh, their defense. It's gonna the biggest matchup is gonna be Ohio State's passing game versus Wisconsin's pass defense. And it's not a fluky pass defense. It's not like teams are running up on them and not and not needing to pass the ball. In fact, two out of the three games Wisconsin's played this year, they've been way ahead. So teams have needed to pass to try to to, to try to catch up. As you as you know how that's how football goes, but. Um, they, they're only allowing about three yards per carry on the run in the run game. And that's, I, to me is just like, okay, so they're not fluky. They're, they actually just good all around defensive team. And, and it, they only allow 46% in pass completion percentage. Can you believe that guy? That's pretty low. And right now, CJ Stroud's completing about 73%. Again, it's one, it's, it's something's got to give here, right? I mean, I you expect both totals. I mean, you expect their completion percentage and defense to come up and you see, you expect CJ to maybe not have 73 to 75% like he usually does. Uh, so there's gotta be some give and take here, obviously, because this is a very good defense. You only allow about 162 yards passing per game, which again, they I get, they're bludgeoning a couple of opponents here. They didn't do it to Washington state. I grant you, but they bludgeoned a couple of opponents here. And all of a sudden they're, they're still only allowing 160 yards per game. That's crazy. But again, they're also generally low in sack percentages. I mentioned earlier. So it's kind of interesting. They, they definitely uh, relying on getting pressure on the quarterback to force those mistakes. Um, but again, I will say this, uh, as much as I respect Wisconsin's defense and much, as much as I think Nick Herbig is a really good player and they got really nice players, and I do respect the fact they create so many turnovers, but we haven't been able to do that on our defense. We've, we, I think we've created two so far this year, and they're, and they're doing three a game. So uh, I can respect that, but I do think that they have not even come close to seeing the level of athlete that Ohio State can present. 
Uh, it's going to be a rocking environment at home in Columbus. C.J. Stroud is a uh, pure pocket passing quarterback who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, Ryan Day is one of the greatest pass uh, pass game schemers in the entire country. I'm not saying that Wisconsin won't have their small victories here and there and and within the uh, within the game, but I do think overall the pass game will shine because uh, if, it was, if this were game one like it was against Notre Dame I'd have my I'd have a bigger concern about it but I think the fact that I'm not going to say that Jackson Smith and Jigba being hurt was a blessing obviously you don't want that or Julian Fleming being hurt is a blessing but in some ways you can at least take advantage of a bad situation and letting Marv and uh and Emeka get more reps with the first team so now CJ is developing that trust and in, in that chemistry but not just Jackson, but not just Julian, but also Marvin Harrison and Mekke Buka and Kate Stover, for that matter. Um, is Wisconsin has a nice tight end uh, in Clay Cundiff that they like? They've they've traditionally used the tight end. We talked about that in the last video. Now we're using the tight end, or at least he's become a threat. We put it on film that he's a threat, and we put it on film that CJ will run the ball a little bit. We we, we do a, a zone read, or CJ can scramble a little bit. So something else for Wisconsin defense to think about. And honestly, if CJ. Uh, if CJ actually will is willing to scramble just a little bit more, even in a game like this, it could open up the path, help open up more passing lanes. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm hoping we give DeWan Jones some help on Nick, and I do believe Pre Paris can handle himself on the left side. It'll be interesting to see what happens there, guys. But I do think uh, CJ is going to have a really good day as normal. I do think Ohio State will win. I do think that. Um, they have a very good opportunity here to win, uh, according to that Vegas line. Uh, a 38-19 victory seems kind of – I mean, it maybe it sounds arrogant for a Buckeye fan, but it seems kind of reasonable in my opinion. I think it's a very possible, especially with recent history. But I do have a lot of respect for Wisconsin and Paul Chris and the things they do there. And um, that, that being said, guys, uh, click subscribe if you think CJ is going to have a really good day and continue his dominance and continue his road towards the Heisman, potentially the Heisman Big Ten Championship and potentially the playoff uh, berth for Ohio State. Appreciate you guys for listening as always, guys. Goodbye, God bless, and go Bucks. Me,